right, he wrote a New York Times bestselling book called The End of Illness. He's back. His new book is A Short Guide to a Long Life. Dr. David Agus joins us. Doctor, thanks for joining us here on the Big 550 KTRS. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You write in this book, A Short Guide to a Long Life, that the best medicine is prevention, not to get sick in the first place. And listen, I'm doing that out of weakness. I look at people with advanced disease all the time, and I realize I can't treat it. I can't reverse it. At the same time, most of those are preventable or delayable. Explain that. You know, there's a pill a day that's 2,000 years old that if you take it, you could do reduce not the incidence, but the death rate of cancer by 37%, heart disease by 22%, and stroke by 17%. It's called a baby aspirin. They're behaviors that can radically change your risk for disease. You know, you can go to that hour at the gym and it's awesome, but then if you sit for five hours a day, it's equivalent to smoking a pack of cigarettes on a health basis. We were designed to move. We have to respect it. So you're saying everybody should be taking a baby aspirin a day? Everyone should talk to their doctor by taking a baby aspirin a day. There's no question about it. And the notion that the doctor makes my decisions is wrong. It's the discussion and the team between you and your doctor. So I want you to go in and say, why aren't I on a baby aspirin? Have that discussion. That's hmm. really interesting. That is interesting. What about, you know, now the big thing now, flu shot. And um, McGraw and I have talked about this before. Some people are like, oh, I'm not going to get a flu shot. And then they're ones, they get the flu and then spread it to everyone else. Should people get flu shots? Listen, oh, no question about it. You know, 40,000 people last year died of the flu. At the same time, most people get flu, survive. Well, if you get the flu a decade from now, your rate of heart disease and cancer are elevated. So I want people to care not just about today, but tomorrow. The flu shot cannot cause the flu, doesn't have real side effects except for an aching arm. It is a no-brainer. Uh, doctor, it's one thing to fix somebody who has a disease, which everybody wants to do, but why is it so hard if, to say, you know what, if you exercise, if you eat right, if you, li if you quit smoking, if, if you lose weight, that will go further into your long-term health. Why is that such a hard sell for people? Because we don't have a metric for it. We don't have a number you can look at. How am I doing? And so it's very hard to convince someone to do something today that will affect them 10, 20, 30 years from now. It's almost impossible. So we have to figure out how to change behavior, how to make it a movement. Because if we're going to change health in our country, we have to do it together. Health is 18% of GDP and rising. We need to make an impact. Not about health care finance, like we keep talking, but about real health. But how about the fact that we don't have any skin in the game? Uh, how many people uh, have a health care program from their job that the smoker and the person who's 50 pounds overweight pays the same amount as the healthy person who doesn't smoke, who is thin and runs every day? I, listen, I agree, couldn't agree with you more. Is that We all have a right to do whatever we want, but at some point we have to take responsibility and pay for the health care ramifications of our behavior. Uh, give us something else besides a uh, baby aspirin a day we should uh, ask our doctor about. Um, so, uh, you know, I want you to go in with your data. You know, most of the time your doctor checks your blood pressure at 2 o'clock. It's elevated. They give you a pill. Well, whoever checked it in the morning when you go up, at night when you go to bed, when you're pissed off after a phone call, there's an old adage, with enough data, error goes away. So get a blood pressure cuff and keep a couple of weeks of data and bring it in and show your doctor and together make that right decision for you. I want you to get naked every month in front of a mirror and look at yourself and start to look at changes. Your doctor sees you once every year or so. They're not going to recognize those changes, but you will, and your body is talking to you. We need to listen to that conversation going forward. In this book, A Short Guide to a Long Life, you say consider DNA testing. Why? Well, listen, right now we check your cholesterol, and that tells you how likely it is for heart disease. People with a low cholesterol still get heart disease. People with a high cholesterol are slightly more than average likely. DNA is the next generation of what's going to happen to you, and it just means what is your relative risk. And so you can actually know what you're up against. The key in my business is information. When you know what you're up against, you can develop the best personalized strategy for you as an individual. This will be commonplace over the next two to three years. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, what about listening to a Playboy bunny who takes her clothes off for your vaccine schedule as opposed to your pediatrician or your doctor? I'm not even sure how to respond to that, <laughs> but <laughs> um, 
you know, listen, it, it, vaccines are tremendously important. If every child got vaccinated for HPV, we would prevent 30,000 deaths in our country a year. And so these are no-brainers. And we need to get away from the notion that there's a conspiracy with vaccines, that they cause things like autism. There is no data for any of those. At the same time, not getting a vaccine, to me, is somewhat criminal. Uh, I agree totally. But it, it's, it's scary, the, the large amounts of people who are buying into the hype online. No question about it. Is that, you know, we all, we all want a quick fix. So we, do, we juice and we take vitamins. We all want information that you know, is alarmist, and we respond to it. We need to look at the data. The data are very clear. And the, what I did in this book, it's 65 rules of do's and don'ts, all of which are data-driven, all of which give you information to actually help you in the long run for your health. A Short Guide to a Long Life. David uh, Agus, our guest, author of the New York Times bestselling uh, book, The End of Illness. Uh, doctor, I want to go back to prevention because throughout the book, this book is about prevention and doing the steps so that we live healthier, longer. Um, prevention is the best medicine going forward, is it not? No question. I say it out of weakness, right? I treat patients with advanced disease, and I know I can't reverse them, and I can't slow them for that long. But I know we have the technology and the data to prevent disease, and it works. Again, the key is getting people to think not just about today, but about tomorrow. Do things now that will benefit 10, 20, 30 years down the road, and we'll all benefit. So you're saying you, you see patients in which you know they're dying from cancer that could have been pre prevented from the beginning? Well, I mean, it most likely could have been prevented or delayed or caught early and cured. And yeah, it kills me, and obviously it kills them, and I don't want that to happen anymore. So the passion I have is to prevent disease. Yeah, you also say, don't forget your feet or your teeth. <laughs> you know, when you ask 80-year-olds, what would you have done differently in your life? Uniformly, the top two answers were take better care of my teeth and better care of my feet. And by the way, I wouldn't have predicted that. But when your teeth aren't good and you get older, you don't enjoy the food, which is a fundamental part of life. When your feet aren't good, you're not going to be able to play with your grandkids like you'd like to. So both of those are key to enjoying a long and healthy life. How do you take care of your feet? Well, you wear good shoes. It's very simple. Imagine walking on cushion all day and shoes that really support you versus walking on shoes where at the end of the day your feet hurt. Even at a young age, that portends for bad things later on. So I guess I should stay out of my stilettos? <laughs> Listen, stilettos fine once in a while, but choose ones that don't hurt you at the end of the day. Big difference. That inflammation is the root of heart disease, cancer, and brain decline. Um really try to focus on comfortable shoes. I tell you what, your take care of your teeth. My father gave me absolutely no advice throughout his entire life, but towards the end of his life, he said, he said take care of your teeth. Um, and it's true. you know. And, and taking care of your teeth consists of cleaning twice a year, fill in cavities, go to the dentist, brush, flossing, flossing right? Simple things to do. No question about it. That inflammation in your gums when you don't floss actually can affect your heart and other diseases in your body. Take care of your teeth. You need it. Uh, a short guide to a long life. Dr. Agus, thank, thank you very much for your time, doctor. Have a good day. Thank you, McGraw and Kelly. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. You got it. 830 here on the Big 550 KTR.